Uh, well, I'm delighted to be here. I have to be very quick because I'm going to give a demo of the system. So this is a real demo of annotation in front of your eyes. Uh, just to show you it's working at the moment, I set it going. Uh, so this is annotating the whole scholarly literature. Um, and the scale of the problem is enormous, uh, but it's achievable. Uh, so um, I'm Peter Murray Rust. I'm a chemist. Um, I'm now uh, a Struttleworth Fellow. I've just retired from being one. Uh, and our goal is to change the world. So like Dan Whaley, uh, Johnny West, uh, you know, we are tackling big problems. And this problem is to make the whole of science available to everybody. Now, science uh, publication is totally broken. Uh, it's a $20 billion a year market, uh, and much of the effort from publishers goes into stopping people reading stuff. So what I'm talking about here are tools of liberation. And I, I see a publisher here. I'm not going to indulge in discourse here in the questions. Right. The tools I'm going to show you are usable for any domain. So not just scholarly publishing, but government reports, um, uh, NGOs, and so on. I'm looking for partners uh, to do this. So the problem is we have literally uh, 10,000 uh, articles a day. I know people who've gone manually through 10,000 documents in three days. They've had to read them, uh, a whole group to do that, um, instead of uh, using machines because they weren't allowed to. So this is my team here. Uh, I just think they're wonderful, as I said, I'm going to have to go through quickly. Uh, we have created something called amanuensis, uh, which is a uh, hybrid of hypothesis and content mine. And an amanuensis, this is one of the best known ones, um, Eric Fenby, uh, Delius's amanuensis, is a scholarly assistant. So the software here and the community behind it is a scholarly assistant to help us understand the world. So, I'm going to ask, what plants produce carvone? Now, you probably haven't heard of carvone, right? Uh, but here's a bottle of shampoo. Carvone, right? Um, and uh, this is what's called an essential oil. If you want to find out about something in science now, the first place to go to is Wikipedia. Wikipedia is fast becoming the authoritative statement about all accessible science. Even if it isn't in there, it will link you to it. So I go to this. And uh, not only does uh, Wikipedia uh, tell us all about it, it tells us uh, what it comes from, it also uh, produces a semantic form of it. And this is tremendously exciting. It's called Wikidata. And Wikidata, I think, is probably the biggest useful public triple store on the planet. Um, so here's uh, Carvone in Wikidata. I'm not going to show you it. I don't have time. But basically, you go here, and you can see here, each of these is a triple subclass of terpenoid. Carvone uh, is called a terpene, right? Um, and um, so I'm working with an, uh, an Indian phytochemist. Phyto means plant. Uh, and she's coming over to Cambridge, and we're going to create a dictionary of all of the essential oils, that's an essential oil, uh, out of the literature. And we're going to do it despite things. So I'm now going to give you the first bit of the demo. How do we look for Carver? Um, uh, this, is a, uh, this is, of course, open source. Everything here is open source, or free software, if you prefer the term. Uh, and we're going to uh, go in here and execute a command. Um, so, sorry about this. Uh, so, yeah, here. Get papers. I'm not going to explain it, but it, the query is Carvone. If you can spell it, it will do it for you. Uh, it goes off. It goes to something called Europe PubMed Central, which is the biggest collection of uh, freely available biomedical papers. Uh, it's run from just outside Cambridge. And you can see it's found 300 on Carvone. We've limited it to 100 because I've only got 15 minutes. And within this time, it's downloaded 100 papers. Uh, and that was real. This is not, you know, smoke and mirrors. So we've got that. I'm now going to mine it for facts. Um, and uh, I use uh, 
stuff that m me and my colleagues have um, uh, developed. I'm going to show you mining for disease here, right? You can see we've got a dictionary of disease. Um, it's from the um, WHO called ICD-10. So we're going to mine it for disease. And off it goes. You don't need to watch um, this unless you're a geek, um, uh, because they like uh, stuff like that. I'm a geek. Uh, so here's the result. Um, and what it's done is it's run all these filters over it. And this will take about two minutes, but I don't have two minutes. Um, so down here are all the papers. And here are the genes in the papers, uh, the um, diseases, uh, the um, drugs, uh, the um, phytochemicals, the species, uh, and so forth. And all of these are pulled out literally within uh, three or four minutes. And we'll be doing this in Cambridge on a production system, and that will be done in uh, certainly, you know, 15 seconds or something like that. So there's no problem about mining the whole literature. Now, you might not know what uh, uh, Candida albicans is, OK? Wikipedia knows what Candida albicans is. So that is linked. That is a semantic link from here to... Is that Joe? Yes. Joe! I didn't notice you there. That, fantastic. Joe runs Europe PubMed Central. She's wonderful. <laughs> right. OK. Uh, so, um, uh, uh, so back... What? I always say good things about it, right? So it's run, OK? Uh, that was underneath the hood. Uh, and so going back to our um, uh, little um, demo here, I could take you on a, an hour of this. It's incredibly exciting. You look for Carvone, and what do you find? Candida albicans. Anyone knows what that is? Foot rot, or, you know, crutch rot, or worse, right? Um, it's a nasty, infective, opportunist fungus. Right, and so you can see we could have a hundred facets here running over the whole scientific literature every day. 10,000 papers, a hundred facets, that's a million uh, bits of information we get each way. And each bit of information is a vector of perhaps somewhere between one and a hundred. So we can get hundreds of millions of facts out of the literature every day. And that is high quality. There's, very, there's about 1% noise in that. So, we built a system to do it. This is our system. It's um, complex because the whole system is complex. It's complex because publishers don't use um, uh, decent markup. They put stuff out in PDF. Uh, it's a hell of a struggle to get anything decent out of publishers um, at the moment. So we have to spend the whole right-hand side there is turning garbage into HTML. And um, I would like to pay tribute to Robin Burgeon, who's picked up our idea of scholarly HTML. And there's a W3 community group of scholarly HTML. So I would suggest that anyone working in this area should... Um, uh, should actually put their documents into scholarly HTML. You don't need XML. Scholarly HTML is simply good old Tim Berners-Lee HTML done in a proper way, isn't it? <laughs> That's all it is. Uh, and then we take the facts out of it. Now, facts are not copyrightable, so we can get these facts, despite uh, the opposition to it, and put them into a data store, which will probably be a mixture of our own and Zenodo at CERN, uh, and we will put the organized facts into Wikidata. Okay. Lots of people think this is a great idea. Julia Reda is one of the heroes of European copyright reform. She's a pirate MEP, and she's put huge effort into that. And I said to her that she would be able to run her system. So she has installed our system on her Ubuntu machine. She's quite a geek. Um, and um, uh, the idea here is that she can then tell to all the people who say, well, this is impossible unless you pay publishers lots of money, uh, she can say, no, I did this in 15 minutes on my laptop uh, in Brussels, and she did. So uh, we've done the first two bits there, and now what we're going to do is the annotation. Now, the annotation uh, is where it really gets exciting, um, and uh, so Tom Arrow in our group has taken the Hypothesis API uh, and put our queries um, into it. So let me show you what we get out of this. This is what we call an entity in context. And uh, because we've done it properly, because hypotheses have done it properly, this is essentially uh, the same as um, a uh, W3C uh, 
uh, annotation um, standard. So you can see here we've got a prefix, Avicenna island aromatic art shows antifungal potential against three candida species. Then we have the, the surface, C. albicans. Now, this is where our bit of expertise comes in. We translate that into candida al albicans, right? Uh, and then the post or suffix is tropicalis and glabra, blah, 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 blah. And we also put in that the uh, X path to that in the document uh, so that people know um, uh, where to find it. So um, uh, I've had just under 10 minutes, right? Uh, less. What? Less. Oh, less. Okay, fine. So now I'm going to show you uh, the thing working. Uh, this is just to tell you how exciting the results are. Uh, but basically, um, this is what we send off to hypothesis. And just to show you uh, that uh, it's real, um, you will see it in the um, uh, uh, box here. This is it actually running, okay? Um, and it's a bit dense, uh, but, um, you know, uh, that's because machines like this stuff. Um, <laughs> uh, that down here, you've got things like, according to Wikidata, this has status. Uh, so what we're doing here is we are marking up against the uh, IUCN's uh, list of endangered species, right? So now comes the uh, crunch. We're actually going to go to the hypothesis site, uh, which should be somewhere here, and see if it's working for us, right? Um, now, I am called user uh, P Peter MR, uh, and these are the markups here. And if I look at this, uh, the question is, is it actually getting up on here? I'll tell you what the markup does, just in case this is not being updated. Uh, but, uh, and let me go to this one. Does anyone know what Meta Sequoia is? Right, well, you, you will in a minute, because it's, where would I find out about it? Exactly, so here we go, uh, and this shows this, and it is the Dawn Redwood, okay? You might have got it from the Sequoia bit, it's a hint. Uh, but over on this side, uh, I've got to make it a bit smaller, uh, and it has a not very uh, uh, pleasant label called 21 hours, which is when it was annotated, uh, but that takes us to the annotation. And what this is doing, oh my goodness, um, the first time uh, that we get one of those, oh dear, because this was the hub, this was where you were all going to go, wow, right? Wow. So, so I'm going to show you what you would have seen. Um, uh, you would have seen the following. You would have seen uh, this. It may well work in a minute. Um, uh, the uh, link to hypothesis. If you clicked on that little bit, you would get to the actual article with the markup there, and um, uh, you've seen the, uh, the Wikidata stuff as well. So I'm going to give it another go, because sometimes these things get frightened uh, if you keep on at them. Uh, so hypothesis, I will reload it, just in case it needed reloading. Um, Oh, this is better. See, two mins. It's doing it right. Now, I have no idea what this stuff is, but this will work. Um, off it goes. Uh, and it is now pointing to one of Joe's papers. That's one of Joe's papers. You're at PMC. What? No, but your <laughs> Joe is... You're at PMC. Here it is. And you see essential oils, you know, uh, and so on. Well, where is the... Um, mark up here. Well, we click on this one and down it goes and here we've got this thing uh, which is a uh, Bursaraceae um, uh, Vuacopua. I wasn't expecting to say that today, right? So this is a real live demo um, and um, uh, so you've all, have you seen Hypothesis today or is this the first time? You have? Okay, fine. So the point is here. This is what the scientific literature should look like. It should be marked up down there against hypothesis markup, linked into Wikidata, linked into Sparkle queries, and so on. And what's the problem? Well, it's a very simple human problem. Right? right. We're not allowed to do it. Uh, and uh, I am working with Chris Hartgrink, who's in the Netherlands. He downloaded papers from Elsevier. Elsevier and this is his words, not mine, uh, uh, they wrote to um, his university, said it was stealing, uh, and they wanted him to stop, and the university stopped him. 
We are legally allowed to do this in the UK, and I am going to do it, regardless of the publishers, um, and we are going to do our best to annotate the complete scientific literature for everybody. My taxi driver said to me, um, Western Australia discovered Campylobacter as the source of ulcers. It is not just academics who know science. Question time. Come on, don't tell me you don't have questions. An observation. I see Charles Oppenheim's in your list. An observation from me. You've got Charles Oppenheim in your team. Absolutely. Good. I, yeah, because you need some heavy duty legal help on this. Absolutely. Yeah. Just an observation. Thanks. Yeah. Um, how domain specific is the approach, like how, the whole How domain technology? specific? Uh, well, let's go back to the diagram. There are several areas of partial domain specificity. The first thing is um, you've got to convert it into um, decent HTML. So if you have stuff from government or whatever, you may well be at this stage already. You call it, any well-formed, normal HTML, which hasn't been through, you know, uh, one of these things with filling it with JavaScript is fine, right? Then you've got to semantically tag it, so you've got to know what the sections are and so on. And sometimes you can guess, but sometimes you need a domain expert. So, for example, in, in uh, science we have introduction, materials and methods, experimental uh, results discussion. If you've got a government publication, it might have something like, you know, um, realm of use, legal considerations, whatever it might be. So you've got to know that, um, but this is why it's so important to have that. Um, we have uh, somewhere around uh, 20 um, uh, dictionaries, as we call them. So going back to the uh, dictionaries, um, wherever they were. Um, sorry. Um, here, these dictionaries. Those dictionaries are taken from standard store sources like uh, there's a new agricultural dictionary from FAO and um, USDA. Uh, there's the um, international non-proprietary names from the, uh, uh, I think it's from the FDA. Uh, there's um, uh, a list of species from IUCN and so on. So we run these over that. So anybody creating a dictionary uh, can do that, right? So there's a technical problem with some of the syntax of the documents. Uh, and then you run the dictionaries over and see what happens. Um, how is uh, hypothesis protecting you from continuing your research in case the US government says, shut down the annotation server? Sorry, I didn't catch that. How, how, how would uh, hypothesis help you in going forward with, with this work? Right. If, there is a, if there is a shutdown from another government? Well, uh, first of all, uh, what you saw here, so this is running on hypothesis. I have an account on hypothesis. Uh, it's done under my account. Um, if I annotate an open paper, uh, which is the one that I showed you here uh, from um, Joe's store, uh, this is an open paper, right? Um, anybody can read it and so on. We can do annotations on closed papers in Cambridge, and we can publish the annotations because they're facts, right? What I showed in that snippet was facts. Uh, then somebody who has the right to read the paper can apply the annotation to their legal copy of the paper. If they don't have a legal copy of the paper, they can't read it. But if they do have a legal copy, they can read it. And we believe, though we haven't yet experimented uh, with hypothesis much, that if we index HTML, uh, then the annotation will work quite well in PDF. But that's an experiment yet to be done. What about the annotations themselves? Where are they? Uh... They're on hypothesis. Yeah, I was asking like the annotations themselves now 
uh, need to be um, made available for all? Well, I am, first of all, I trust Dan completely, we're Shuttleworth <laughs> Fellows uh, and so on. Um, I don't trust the longevity of um, organisations, so if these annotations are to be uh, kept, I would uh, look to Zenodo as a place to put them, that's CERN Library, because I believe CERN will be here longer than my lifetime. Um, but it all comes down to permanence of organisations. Yeah, yeah. I was just asking if you talked to Don, Dan about that already. Uh, and presumably, given that Hypothesis supports the web annotation data model and is working on the protocol, you could swap out for any other conforming implementation yes. in the future. So, the advantages of standards. Okay, well, one last question before lunch. Over there. I uh, just wanted to ask, does your scraper support uh, Sci-Hub? Is there a perspective on that? Uh, she must not be named. Right. Um, <laughs> I have written four blogs about Sci-Hub. Uh, I worded them very carefully. The first thing is that if I use or promote Sci-Hub, uh, that is a criminal offence in the UK. And at the moment, sorry, that is a criminal offence in the UK. And at the moment, I do not intend to break the law, either the civil law or the criminal law. Um, I do not, however, act as other people's policemen. So uh, the technology is out there. If somebody wishes to uh, write it, everything is CC BY. We couldn't stop them even if we wanted to. Uh, 